It's a strain of bacteria that caused a big outbreak of blood poisoning in Singapore four years ago. And among people who had eaten hawker dishes containing raw freshwater fish, one man ended up losing all his limbs. Now, it sparked a ban on all such dishes at the time, and now scientists here have found that the strain of GBS bacteria called ST283 has been present in Southeast Asia for over 20 years. In 2015, over 160 people in Singapore were struck with a rare strain of Group B Streptococcus or GBS bacteria after they consumed raw freshwater fishes. They included tilapia, carp and snakehead. Those who consumed the fishes displayed symptoms such as the infection of brain and joints. A 50-year-old man had both his hands and limbs amputated after he ate the infected raw fish. Following the outbreak, Tan Tok Sing Hospital conducted a study which found that the bacteria strain has existed in Southeast Asia for more than 20 years. They investigated over 1,300 human samples that contained the bacteria from countries like Laos, Thailand and Vietnam dating back to 1995, as well as tilapia samples from Malaysia and Vietnam. Tilapia is chosen because it's commonly cultured in aquaculture, so it's one of the most common fish that's used for high-intensity aquaculture, and it's also known to be affected by Groupie streptococcus. It's also known to be affected by SC283. We want our public to remember the advice from the Ministry of Health that they should cook their river fish, and if it's cooked well, it's perfectly safe. Since the outbreak in 2015, Tan Tok Sing Hospital says they have seen an average of less than 10 cases yearly linked to the GBS bacteria strain. But the hospital plans to conduct more research. They will be working with the Genome Institute of Singapore to determine the origin and transmission of the bacteria strain. And Dr. Timothy Barkham joins us tonight, and he's principal lead investigator in that study. Thank you very much, Dr. Barkham, for coming in to speak to us. Um, so your study found that, it's, that this particular strain has been found in Southeast Asia in the past 20 years. Is it specific to only farmed fish? Is it also specific to only tilapia? And what about uh, you know, saltwater fish, you know, wild fish? Well, let's put aside the saltwater fish for the moment. We don't believe it's in saltwater fish at all. So it's perfectly safe to go and eat saltwater fish in sushi restaurants, etc. Um, we looked in tilapia because at the time of the outbreak, back in 2015, there was only one report of ST283 in the whole world in animals, and that was in a single tilapia in Thailand about five to ten years earlier. So we wrote to the people who published that data and said, hey chaps, this is what we think is going on, can you help us? Yeah. And they happened to be already looking in tilapia and said, yes, we'll work with you and gave us their data. Mm. So it's in farmed fish and only in We've tilapia? We've only looked in farmed fish. We haven't looked in wild fish. So, Dr. Barkham, uh, when this outbreak occurred, there were reports at the time that it had, you know, it was found in other types of fish mm. like tormund fish, song fish and so on. I mean, how, how, do, how do we sort of account for that? Yeah, so this is very interesting. So mm. back at the time, uh, authorities in Singapore went to the markets and sampled many fish, uh, and we found it in several species, uh, as was published and reported at the time. But we think that's due to cross-contamination. We have not gone back to the original farms where those mm. fish came from, but the data from the ports where the fish come through found it in far fewer fish. So we think that's a result of mishandling poor hygiene. Mm. Okay. So is it only specific to fish about seafood, prawns, yabbies and, and crabs? We don't have any data suggesting it causes disease or is present in other animals. Is there a way to prevent this bacteria from occurring in the fish? Mm. Well, this is a lovely question because, of course, there has, apart from scientific interest, there has to be an, an output to this. Uh, and the first thing is that the way to prevent it in fish may be to use vaccines. Now, there are fish vaccines used to protect fish from group B streptococci, but there are different vaccines which the farmers should use depending on which bacterium is causing the disease. Mm. But the farmers don't know which bacterium is causing the disease. They do not have the laboratory infrastructure to know that. So they don't use the vaccines. So the question is, why only Southeast Asia and not anywhere else? Is there something wrong with, you know, the way we're farming our fish here? Well, this is tremendously interesting. We're saying only Southeast Asia because it hasn't been reported in the rest of the world until very recently. Now, why Southeast Asia? Because it probably originated here. Now, we don't know how it originated and where it came from originally. 
And that's going to be very hard to study because we think it emerged back in the early 80s. So we're not sure we'll ever find the answer to that. But we do know it's widespread in tilapia farms in Southeast Asia. Okay, so but then your research now um, is focused on identifying opportunities to interrupt transmission. Absolutely. So, so what can be done then? Well, the main thing is we showed everybody it's everywhere. And that's the first step because nobody knew it was before. Mm. And that's why this is so important. Mm. If you don't know there's a problem, you can't even begin to address it. So that was the main thing. Now our next job is far bigger than us as individual researchers. We have to involve ministries and governments in other Southeast Asian countries, get them together and say, chaps, this is what's going on. What can you do at your government level? What support can you give to people working in One Health? That's a combination of animal and human health to address the issue. Right. Well, it, it's a particularly nasty little bacteria, isn't it? I mean, it, it caused, uh, you know, quite the stir all those years ago. But uh, how devastating can it be health-wise? I mean, there was one individual who, who was very badly impacted. Yes, for individuals like that, of course, it is devastating. One way we measure these things is to ask uh, what proportion of people die. We call that mortality. And we studied cases in Singapore and the mortality rate was about 4%. So for every 100 patients with the disease, around four died. We don't know if that's the same rate in other countries because we haven't studied that. Mm. So GSV is not thought to be a foodborne disease in the rest of the world. Why is that? Well, we don't think it is because nobody's reported it as such, <laughs> is one way of answering that. Okay. But it might be because the other group B streps, uh, which are in foodstuffs around the world, are not as virulent as SD283. SD283 is special. It's super special. This is why the outbreak was so unique. We haven't seen other group B streps attack healthy adults in this way. Right. We don't know what causes them to be so aggressive or so successful from their perspective. And we're currently studying that, mm. but we don't know yet. But there is a vaccine right now for it as well. There is not a vaccine specifically aimed at ST283, no. There are a couple of vaccines for fish aimed at different kinds of group B streptococci. We don't know whether any of them are actually effective against SD283 yet. So the best way now is to just cook your fish. Absolutely. Okay. Cooking makes it safe. Thank you so much, Dr. Timothy Barker, for coming in and speaking to us. Senior consultant, medical microbiologist from the Department of Laboratory Medicine at Tan Tok Singh Hospital.